Yeah, I was. Uh, I, I don't know that much about uh, making money from big data, but I didn't think it was that hard. Uh, same way you make money from colored water, right? You put it in bottles and then you sell it. Okay. Um, so to give you some context around that, <clears throat> since you know the, the answer was inherent in the question, how do you turn data into money? You do a transaction and exchange it. So that got me thinking along the lines of transactions. Um, that is to say. Um, We're going to restrict the discussion to transactions, kind of big data. I know there's other things, that, you know, other kinds of data, but you know, in 10 minutes we don't have time to talk about that. So we're going to just do the simple stuff. <clears throat> so you do transactions, you collect data about the transactions, you build a big database, and then you sell it. That's how you profit. Well, there might be other ways that you could do it too. Now, my company provides a service where you can uh, host large data, you know, big data in the cloud. And so I'm, since I don't know that much about it, I'm going to tell you what some of our customers are doing to make money. Um, so we're going to be speaking mostly about people in the mortgage-backed security space and the retail uh, store space, because that's what I can talk about. So this is the uh, icon for databases, but um, I'm not really, this is, I told you, not a technical conference, so this will represent databases. <laughs> so you, you know, build recommendations, you analyze data, you hire data scientists, and then, you know, you get insight into your data. That's the easy stuff if you have big data. So other people know a lot more about that than I do, so I'm not going to talk about that. I want to talk about the change that the internet has brought to the whole data space. And that is middleman. <clears throat> I actually Googled it. The Google trends on middlemen is really low. People are not interested in middlemen. But, but the internet is the greatest engine for the creation of middlemen that the planet has ever seen. And you used to really hear a lot about disintermediation, that the internet disintermediated, but that, you know, it's, it's not true. So if you think about classic company like OpenTable. It used to be you went to a restaurant, you called the restaurant, you went to the restaurant, they sold you food, you paid for it. It was a transaction between you and the restaurant. But now, there's this middleman that you can use. <clears throat> and if you use a middleman, or if you want to profit from data and you insert yourself as a middleman, then <clears throat> there are now two databases, the database that the restaurant is keeping of whatever it is that they're doing, and of course, the middleman's database. <clears throat> and the reason I wanted to talk about middlemen is because there's something special about the middleman database that lets you profit. So if you want to profit from data, big data, first, try to think of yourself as a middleman. Try to figure out who you're a middleman between. And when I use the term middleman, by the way, I just want to say that I'm using it in the gender neutral sense. That means middle woman as well. <clears throat> now, middlemen have been around for a long time in the retail space, certainly. And the old notion of a middleman was you collect a percentage of the transaction, so you profit from the cash. Since cash is flowing, you take a little bit. But now, what you knew is, as a middleman, you know more about what's going on in the transaction than either of the parties to the transaction. So let's take a simple example. You're <clears throat> selling soft drinks. And I'll take two fictional companies, Coke and Pepsi. Um, so you're Dollar General or Rite Aid. You're a large retailer, and you're selling soda. You keep all of the data about the transaction. It's your data. You own that data. Coca-Cola doesn't have that data, but they like to know who's buying Coke. So you could sell it back to Coke. But Pepsi is also interested, and you could sell it to Pepsi. And that's what's special about the middleman data. The middleman knows stuff about everybody involved in the transaction, even people who weren't party to this transaction, because they were parties to other transactions. And the, so the secret of data as we see it, where data becomes valuable. The first law of data value is, data is information is valuable when you know something that nobody else does. 
That's what makes it valuable. And the second thing that makes it valuable is you know something that other people don't want you to know. And any time you have data of the first kind, it immediately turns into data of the second kind. I mean, you know something that's valuable, other people wish you didn't know it, and they would want to know it too, and if they knew it, you don't want them to know it, so. <clears throat> I don't have time to talk about privacy terribly much, but 2006 was a great year for privacy. AOL released their... Um, anonymized searching data, and it turned out not to be so anonymous, and that was a bad thing. <clears throat> now, we did something similar recently, and it was a good thing, although it was kind of sort of the same thing, um, which is if you have mortgage-backed data, as we do, and you have credit data, as we do, um, and they're all anonymized, by the way, then you have all of these mortgages that go into mortgage-backed security, and that's anonymous data, and you have all of these credit scores that go into credit reports, which is anonymized data. But if you take each mortgage and you compare it to every credit report and you do that, you can actually match up which mortgages went with which credit score, mostly. And then you can find out that you know some people who claim to be doing a uh, first occupancy mortgage actually have another mortgage, have another home. And we did that analysis. So. <clears throat> When you combine multiple data sources, even if they're anonymized data sources, if you have the detail and you can look at all of these details and manipulate them with a lot of horsepower, you can find out stuff that you weren't supposed to know. So when you combine one data set with another data set, the value of the sum is greater than the sum of the value, which makes you want to have as many data sets as possible. So coming back to our... Uh, soda example, we assumed that this was going to be a cash transaction. But of course, if you pay with a credit card, another middleman has inserted himself into the game, and now you have three databases. And these databases don't overlap exactly. Um, credit card company knows about transactions that didn't happen at your store. You know about what was actually in the basket, so you know what the components of that thing were. And, of course, Coke is in the dark. So you can all sell stuff to each other. Except when people don't want you to. So if this example is with Coke and Pepsi, nobody raised outrage at this idea because, you know, that's just fair commerce. But if I were talking about, say, I don't know, Thorazine or Retrovir, then all of a sudden it's like, well, no, you can't, you can't do that. Um, there are laws against that kind of thing. Okay? Uh, what about Depends? Well, you know, it could be equally embarrassing, but there are no laws about it. So it turns out that when you have lots of databases and lots of middlemen, the data flows are asymmetric. Some people are allowed to sell some stuff to other people who are not allowed to sell it back to them. But now you have an interesting marketplace, and that's what makes it so profitable. So, as a for instance, um, we have um, retailers who want to buy the mortgage data so that they can combine it, so they can see where they should locate stores. Because the mortgage data will tell them sort of whether neighborhoods are going up or down in various ways. But if you're a mortgage back, if you're an investor and you kind of want to get a peek at who's buying what so that you can refine your investment strategy, you can't buy the detailed data that um, Dollar General or Rite Aid are selling to Coke or Pepsi because you're not one of their suppliers. So there's an asymmetry and that might work itself out over time. So anyway. I am singing the praise of the middleman. Which means there's room for a middleman in the data business. And that would be us. And LexisNexis, who went before me, and lots of other people here who are new middlemen. But <clears throat> we'd like to think of ourselves as kind of being in the middle of these things, and we're not actually in the data business. We just sort of make host a, a, a place where people can do data business, and in order to do the data business, what's most valuable is to have a lot of these databases available sort of all together. 
So I will say one thing about it, though. If you have something that's much faster than the other databases flying around, that would be a good thing. Because what you want to do is you want to analyze data at the detail level. Once you aggregate data, you can't, you can't peek inside and get the insights that you would get if it were detailed data. So once you've aggregated it, you lose it. A classic example in the case of one of our customers was the average number of items in a basket was seven items. But when you, they started analyzing things at the detail level, it turns out that not a, not a single basket actually had seven items in it. There were a bunch of people who bought two or three things in a basket, and there were a bunch of people who bought you know, 12 or 15 things in a basket. Um, so there were actually two completely separate markets. When you're looking at aggregate data, you missed it completely. <clears throat> and of course, if you've got lots of databases with lots of horsepower all sort of co-located, then you can combine them in all kinds of interesting ways and get more insights than you could if you had all of them separately. So, a slide with bullet points. And because I'm only saying things that everybody knows and has known for a long time, I'm using a Bookman Old style font <laughs> to evoke that sort of classic notion, which is one, middlemen, middlemen can see other people's data, and other people's data is what's valuable. And if you have multiple middlemen, they can combine these data sets. You want to do it on the detail, so when you're combining detail sets that are large, and you get these outer product combinatorial explosions, you need lots of horsepower, and these flows are asymmetric. You can probably tell I'm not in marketing. So I brought the marketing slide, which explains this much better than I could. Um, and it turns out that what I'm talking about is what our customers are actually doing, which is to say we have more customers that sell their data to other people and buy data from other people and engage in some kind of data exchange, then we do have that people have to just sort of analyze their own data uh, and nobody else's. <clears throat> and so for the first time ever, I've come in on time and under budget. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> we we have a pod if anybody wants to learn more about the company. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Robert.